Because heart attack and stroke can strike suddenly without any warning, doctors ask the question, is this person without any symptoms who appears to be healthy actually at high risk of heart attack or heart attack death? The tests that answer this question are the screening tests for high risk. Screening tests detect silent blood vessel damage early before symptoms occur so that treatment can get started early to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. The heart attack risk assessment that we went over in the heart attack risk assessment series is a great screening procedure for identifying people with silent blood vessel damage. But no single procedure can identify everyone who's at high risk of heart attack or heart attack death. There are other screening tests that can find people at high risk who are not identified as high risk on the heart attack risk assessment. The two screening tests I'll go over today are first, the CT calcium score, also called coronary artery calcium, and the second test is the screening carotid artery ultrasound scan. First, the CT calcium score. In this test, a CT scan of the heart is done to measure the amount of calcium present in the heart arteries. If there's a high amount of calcium in the heart arteries on the CT scan, then the evidence suggests that the person is at high risk of heart attack and heart attack death, even if his heart attack risk assessment indicates that he's only at intermediate risk. So this test can find people with silent blood vessel damage who are at high risk, who are not found by the heart attack risk assessment that we went over in heart attack risk assessment series. And by finding people at high risk before they have symptoms, we can start them earlier on treatment that prevents a further silent blood vessel damage and so lessens the person's risk of heart attack and stroke. So who can benefit from getting a, a CT calcium score? Well, it's the people who've had a heart attack risk assessment that shows them to be at intermediate risk. A high calcium score in these people will move them into a high risk category, and so they need the same preventive medicine as all the other people who were found to be at high risk by the simple heart attack risk assessment. Now, persons at low risk for, uh, for heart attack by the heart attack risk assessment don't need a calcium score. Persons found to be at high risk because of their uh, heart attack risk assessment also don't need a coronary artery calcium, CT calcium score. That's because we already know that they're at high risk and so need vigorous treatment. And the CT calcium score is not for everyone at intermediate risk. The data that it helps find uh, people who are at high risk is strongest for white men who are not Hispanic. There isn't enough data to say whether the test is useful in women and in African Americans. And all this is based on the uh, American Heart Association a 2007 clinical expert consensus document on coronary artery calcification. Now I'd like to go over briefly the second screening test used to find people who appear to be healthy but actually are at high risk. This test is the screening carotid ultrasound scan. In this test, the carotid arteries in the neck which supply blood to the face and brain are visualized with the ultrasound scanner. So there's no radiation involved. We scan the blood vessels looking for the presence of plaque, cholesterol buildup, and also for the presence of thickening of the lining of the blood vessels called intimal medial thickening. If either plaque or thickening of the lining are present, it indicates high risk of heart attack or heart attack death and therefore increased risk of stroke. This test, like the CT calcium score, is best used to detect high risk in persons who are at intermediate risk by the heart attack risk assessment methods that we went over in 
the heart attack risk assessment series. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find it useful.